Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nirish Kumar Singh and you are watching Agile Tester Certification. We are moving to chapter two now and we are done with chapter one so far. If uh, in case you have missed the tutorials, please follow the previous tutorials before you come here then it is in the sequence of the order to be executed as a part of the syllabus. So we are talking about chapter two, fundamental agile testing principles practices and process. So here we'll be digging into more details, understanding about what exactly is the agile test principles and practices and all about the process is. So we have three topics to understand here. Difference between traditional and agile approaches is what we'll be getting started with. Status of testing in agile projects, role and skills of a tester in agile team. So let's see what we have got in the first topic here. Difference between the traditional and agile approaches, testing and development activities. So in this tutorial, we'll be talking about 2.1.1. What are the activities generally takes place as a part of this? So let's see the very first thing to understand about what exactly is the main difference between the traditional and agile approaches and how the testing and development activities occur, unlike the traditional approaches. So when you talk about the traditional approaches here, of course, we used to do a longer duration of execution where the first piece of code or maybe the first uh, you know, information was provided to the client only after six to nine months. And by that time, it would have been already late because we were busy creating heavy documentation and a lot of work products, which was uh, required for the process. But when you talk about Agile, of course, we'd work on a short iterations, like limited to maybe two weeks of time. And we just create whatever we have and we give a working product to the end user that is client or the customer to just get a early and frequent feedback. So we have been talking about a lot of other things. Please keep on relating that as we talk about some of the terms like that. Now here, when you talk about Agile again, unlike traditional approaches, tester, developer, and business stakeholders contribute and work together. That means they also term to be you know, working together with the tester because we know about development team now, and these three people work together for one common reason. So even the other people contribute to the testing. So it's just not that it is testers responsibility to uh, define the quality in the product. Even developers and stakeholders like business uh, representative will be contributing to the same. So they also help work together to achieve as much as possible from the point of quality. So we also have something specific, which is like, you know, the hardening and stabilization iterations, which can be done in between, which would be of another shorter duration to generally make sure that whatever we could not do in the previous iteration will be completed here before we can move to actually the next iteration. So we don't keep anything pending for the upcoming iteration. So we just try to see that how much ever we can cover before we can get into the new set of tasks to be covered as a part of uh, the next iteration. So we call it as stabilization iteration, where we just try to see anything which is required to be done before we can move to the next set of activities. And of course, uh, that would be done uh, with no uh, compromise on integrating the system with the existing one where we talk about the continuous integration in the previous chapter, we understood about the same. Also, we have something called as a big uh, fix bugs first uh, as a concept in the uh, iterations. When we talk about like whatever is pending from the previous iteration, we give priority to it that the bugs are first, uh, first fixed before moving into the next iteration from the previous iteration. So whatever is remaining from the previous iteration will we try to fix the first before we move into the next iteration. Because if you skip that, of course, the workload will increase more and maybe you might have to hold your execution for some time to fix all those defects. So we give priority to fix the bugs first before getting into the new task. Also, to add to this understanding, we are talking about the stream programming concept, which we have known from the chapter one again, and we generally use pairing uh, option there. So we say that it is something unique from the traditional point of view. When you talk about Agile, that pairing is used. Pairing means that two testers can sit together and work on testing a particular feature, or maybe also it can be between developer and tester who work together as pair to define or determine or develop and test a particular a feature which is being created. Also, when we talk about uh, the testers, testers being a good uh, validation member or contributing to a particular quality point of view, they can also turn to be a quality coaches for the entire development team. That means they can teach, they can make other people understand from the development team that what exactly testing is all about, how we can contribute the best, the process improvement, conducting more efficient uh, execution of the stages and all can be done by the test engineers here. And we allow that to do, but generally that doesn't happen in the traditional approaches. 
Of course, uh, test automation is one of the helpful input for the Agile because we have short duration iterations and also a quick uh, delivery of uh, working products. Then, of course, automation plays a vital role to save a lot of time. And generally, we do 70 to 80 percent of automation in Agile, and but we just do some another 10 to 20 percent of manual testing. So most of the things is what I mean to say is automated, and generally, like a lot of other activities are being automated, which we will see in the upcoming session and even in continuous integration we understood that static analysis or you know deployment of the tool environment setup and all those things can be automated so here we have the same thing and we just try to use as much as informal techniques possible because these informal techniques will take less time compared to the formal techniques and anyways we don't have the prerequisite to apply the formal techniques here much so let's see what we have got more in this uh, yeah, of course uh, the changes are welcome in the agile approaches so changes are allowed uh, anytime the client can uh, you know contribute in terms of modifying the requirements and throughout the life cycle maybe later in the life cycle as well in the iteration so maybe your iteration lasts for 10 days then maybe till seventh day or sixth day or eighth day as well the client can give you the you know changes required in the requirement and we entertain those things we just don't say no to that so we accept it then of course uh, the testing requires really you know a lot of efforts to be taken at that point of time so that uh, we can really make it as much as possible like to the extent where it's supposed to deliver the client expectations so anyways team this was from the very first topic of the testing and development activities of the agile principle practices and process hope you have understood the content and uh, definitely learned something new today so in case you have still any queries feel free to comment below i'll be there to assist you and till then uh, keep exploring keep understanding and keep understanding the concept of the agile methodology thanks for watching the video team happy learning